Well, hello and welcome to Family Worship. Really great to have you. I'm Rachel, a children's and youth worker here at St. Peter's. Hello. And if it's not too late to say, Happy New Year. Happy 2021. Um, and a big thank you to John a couple weeks ago and Viv last week for taking care of things and I've been poorly. Yes. And thank you because um, Mandy, my friend, is here with us later to do some prayers and a story. And with the prayers, there's going to be a bit of um, an activity as well. Um, so keep an eye out for that. That would be really cool. Really exciting. But why are we here? We're here to worship God, to think about him, to learn about him, to say thank you to him. So one thing that we like to do, of course, is to pray and talk to him. So let's get started with that, why don't we? Okay, I'll tell you more about my monkey a bit later, but <laughs> let's talk to God and the words will be on the screen. You can say those out loud in your heart, say amen to make it your prayer, which means yes. There's also actions that you can follow along with too. Okay, so let's just start by talking to God. Good morning, God. Thank you for this new day. Here are my ears. Help me to listen to what you want me to hear today. Here, God, is my heart. I'm sorry for the bad things I've done. Please forgive me. Help me now to worship you, God, and show my love for you with my clean heart and soul, my mind and all my strength. Amen. Amen. Good morning. It's really nice to be with you this morning. I was really pleased when I was asked to come along and share this morning's story. So I have brought a story box with me. And if you want to get yourselves ready to hear a story, whatever you like to do to get yourself ready. And then we'll start. So let's open the box and see what there is to help us this morning. So we've got a story cloth. It's kind of kind of sandy looking, I guess, and it's got quite a rough texture to it. A picture. I wonder who that might be in the picture. Oh, I think that's everything we need to get ready. So let's start. When Jesus grew up, he was baptised by John. And afterwards, he went out into the desert. Now, the desert is a dangerous place. People don't usually go there unless they have a good reason. It gets very hot in the day and it's very cold at night. And it's a very difficult place to live because not much grows there. So there's very little food, very little water. But Jesus went out into the desert to find out more about himself and to discover what his work might be. And Jesus stayed in the desert for 40 days with very little to eat or drink. He was very hungry. And one day it was as if he heard a voice that came to him and said, you are the son of God. Take these stones, turn them into bread and eat. But Jesus said no 
to be fully human, we need more than bread. We need the word of God. And the voice came again to him. And it was as if he was on the top of the tall tower in the temple in Jerusalem. And the voice said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from this tower because God will send his angels to catch you. And Jesus said, no, we should not test God. And the voice came to him another time. And it was as if Jesus could see all of the kingdoms in the world. And the voice said, I will give you all of these kingdoms if you will bow down and worship me. But Jesus said, no, I am to be a king, but not the kind of king that you are thinking about. And after that, the voice left him. And Jesus crossed back over the river, back into the world and began his work. Now, we're going to do some wondering about the story. And you might like to wonder by yourself quietly, or you might like to pause the video and wonder with the people in your house. However you like to wonder is just fine. And so I wonder, I wonder what you like best about this story. I wonder which is the most important part of this story. I wonder if you or I are in this story or if there's a part of this story that is especially about us. I wonder which part of this story you would most like to keep. I'm going to put the story away now, but you can keep on wondering if you like. The tall tower. The kingdoms of the world. The desert stones. The picture. The desert cloth. hope that you can take this story with you into this week as you do your work whatever that is right everyone let's sing great big god a song that reminds us that god holds us and keeps us safe and also has an amazing plan for our lives here we go Baby. 
Harvey the elephant, which is our memory verse elephant. I do have a monkey, however. Um, I do not yet have a name for said monkey, so could you please comment, perhaps, and give me a monkey name? That would be great. <laughs> and some terrible jokes for you about monkeys. What is a monkey's favourite drink? Chimpan tea. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> and what did the banana say to the monkey? Nothing. Bananas can't talk. Wah, wah, wah. But anyway, start off with the tin. Now, I am from England, like, well, I wasn't born here, but I'm British, my mum is British, but I'm also American. And when I was little, now I don't completely know the point of the song, I think it's part of a game and it's part of a nursery rhyme um, and I've gone onto YouTube and I've heard various tunes to it, so the tune, I apologise if you know a different tune, but the tune I'm going to sing is the one I remember, okay? <laughs> so there was a song where we're all detectives, right? And you kind of like go in a circle and it's about, it, it, you wouldn't call it a tin and biscuits in America are like scones so you'd call them cookies right? and sometimes they're in jars so you would say and you would sing who stole the cookie from the cookie jar and you would say something like peter stole the cookie from the cookie jar and peter would say who me could it be susie stole the cookie from the cookie jar and susie would be like who me could it be it was you and it keep going and going but anyway <laughs> In that scenario, there's a bit of a predicament, which is a big word for a problem. Somebody has done something we can all agree isn't good. They shouldn't have stole the cookie from the cookie jar. Okay? But have you ever been in that place where you really want to do something? All right? And often, you know, sometimes this is when it's something that's not so good and quite negative, you know. You really want to steal something that doesn't belong to you or you know, someone's made you angry and you really want to hit them or you really want to say something not nice to them, you know, and that, when that's inside you and you really want to do something, the big word is a temptation. Now we have a Bible verse about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. The only temptations that you have are the temptations that all people have, but you can trust God. He will not let you be tempted more than you can stand. But when you are tempted, God will also give you a way to escape that temptation. Then you will be able to stand it. <sighs> All right, you can pause this video now or a bit later and you can try to remember that Bible verse. Okay, try to repeat it. You can write it out. Again, like go onto our website. You can email us photos if you try these things or any activities you do with today. We'd love to see them. But anyway, but sometimes it's really hard to do the right thing. It's really hard to know what the right thing is to do. And it's really hard to do it sometimes when we really want to. God's given us the Bible to teach us about lots of people and including Jesus himself who went through that. And we can learn that sometimes they didn't make good decisions, but God still brought good from it. Okay, so remember, we can say sorry for whatever we've done wrong. But also, 
there's loads of examples where God helped them, gave them strength. People say, God, help me to make the right decision. You know, and we can ask God to help change our lives, to be more like him, to make decisions more like Jesus would make. You know, what would Jesus do? And, um, you know, Jesus was God, wasn't he? You know, so he was perfect. But he also came as a human so that he could understand and be tempted. Jesus actually wanted to have those experiences of having all those difficult decisions to make that we make every day of right and wrong, isn't it? And he went through that. He experienced that for us so that he could die on the cross because he was perfect and none of us are. And so that we can be forgiven forever. And when we pray, we know we're praying to a God who understands and he will help you. All right, he will help change you with those fruits of spirit, you know, the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Um, help you with making good decisions in life and to just be with you, whether it's difficulties about making the right decisions or difficulties in life, we can turn to God. So this week in our prayers, we're going to think about praying about difficult things. I think Jesus must have found his time in the desert very hard. And I think what helped him was knowing God's word and knowing that God was with him, even though things felt really difficult. And so I've brought some things along to help us pray. If you remember last week, Viv showed you how to make her prayer scroll. And so I thought if I showed you something as well, perhaps you could put your activity from today with your scroll from last week, and then you'll be able to build up a little stockpile of ways to help you pray. So we're going to pray about difficult things and the things I've brought to help, you might want to pause your video and go and find some of these things. You don't need all of them. So for one of the activities, you need a couple of buttons and some string or some thread for one of them, you need a stone and a pen. And for the other, you just need a little bit of sandpaper or anything really that feels rough. So maybe even a bit of bubble wrap or um, some cardboard that's corrugated, anything like that would do. And I'll show you how to use these things to help you pray. So Father, we are thinking today of difficult things. And Lord, we think about people known to us who are having a difficult time. And if you've got a button, pick it up and hold it and just feel how hard that button is. And just remember people known to you who might be finding things difficult at the moment. Maybe they are on their own at the moment and are finding it lonely. Maybe they're poorly. Whoever they are and whatever they find difficult, tell to God about that now. And then as you talk to God about it, thread your second button onto your thread. And so your first button is to remind you of the people that are finding things difficult. And the second button is to remind you that God is with them and to remind you to pray for them and to pray that God will be with them. And we can tie the thread together. And Lord, we pray that the people known to us, whoever they are, that are having a difficult time, would know that you are with them, just like these buttons are tied together. And Lord, we're going to use a stone now to help us pray for ourselves. And we hold our stones, and again, we feel that they are hard, and heavy to hold. And sometimes, Lord, we worry about things and that can make us feel heavy or make us feel like we're carrying heavy things around. And Lord, you know what our worries are. And as we offer these stones to you, we take our pens and we write on them something that reminds us of you. So I'm putting a J on mine to remind me that Jesus is with me. 
And Lord, I offer you those things that you know about that are making me feel heavy. Amen. And now we're going to pray for people that we don't know that might be having a difficult time. So you take your piece of sandpaper and you can feel how rough it is. And we pray for people that are having a difficult time at the moment. So that might be teachers at school working so hard. It might be the people serving us in supermarkets or the doctors and nurses in our hospitals. And as we pray for them, Lord, we turn over the sandpaper and we feel a smooth side. And we pray that you will smooth their souls and bring them peace. Amen. And so I hope that you can use one of these activities to help you pray this week. And you might even want to carry one of them around in your pocket so that when you are out for your walk or when you're moving around your house, you can put your hand in and just feel those prayers. And remember that God is with you in those difficult times. <laughs> 